Okay, here we are. Uh, lesson four. It used to be um, divided into parts, but now there's just one lesson four. And uh, you need to go to the 2008 uh, lectures 4A and 4B, which have uh, more details which have been removed in these um, in this um, set here because things are changing. And we're looking at trends, these trends are changing. When I can only get data from a few years ago to document the trend, its validity is uh, not quite so compelling. Anyway, we, this has uh, various things from industry, technology, and consumer. Okay, here we have a plot of uh, sometimes called Moore's Law, which effectively uh, tells us the uh, cost uh, per a, a million transistors, $500 uh, in uh, 1990 to uh, five cents now, a factor of 10,000. And uh, you can either get, uh, this either becomes new performance or actually typically more uh, smaller devices. And that's actually what's driving the edge a lot. This drives multi-core on the server because you just keep the same physical footprint. You just put more and more cores into it. And on the edge, well, now you have very powerful computers you can put on the edge because you can get uh, a million transistors in a very small form factor, or actually watch. Um, so, um, as I say, around 2008, the clock speed leveled off, and now the feature size improvement, which is still giving us some improvement here, is uh, also leveling off. Still, it has another 10 years or so probably to go when you'll still see uh, real compute cost improvements. Here is another way of presenting the same information coming from Wikipedia. It represents the cost of uh, doing a gigaflop of performance. Uh, a gigaflop is 10 to the ninth uh, floating point operations a second. And I say in 1961, which was roughly when I started doing computing, that was the IBM 7030 stretch machine was dominant, or at least the leading edge machine, $8 million. And you need 2,400 of them to get gigaflop of faults. Then uh, Cray came along, and this price actually rapidly decreased. And then you can see it going down here to uh, in September 27 to, to uh, three cents in the Celeron. And uh, it's sort of interesting to see Sony, PlayStation. People once thought that was going to be a great impact on computing. It didn't actually have any impact on computing because its architecture was screwed up and impossible to program usefully. But it, I think it was sort of obvious. People were too excited. Um, and here are various AMD, Intel machines, AMD. Um, and and um, so here's the Baerbock Costa, which was an important development. All right, so this just represents the same data which you often see on graphs, but presented as a table, which makes it maybe a little more interesting. Okay, here's a special slide from 2018 Internet Trends, which um, partly um, includes the information of the previous slide. This is the uh, calculations per second um, from the major computer for $1,000 worth of computers. Um, and over here is the same thing for storage. Here we have the price to store. Um, Price per gigabytes dropping drastically. And here we have the hard drive capacity. Here we have uh, 10 terabytes up here. So these are all the trends that uh, we see in day-to-day -day life, because they affect our PCs and even our smartphones. And as we know, they are tailing off because of the so-called end of Moore's Law. And maybe the beginning of quantum computing. I don't think I'll have a quantum smartphone. Maybe I'm wrong, but that would be fun. All right, that's great. Thank you. Next time, we will return to the past uh, in the slide after this. Here is the same thing for um, storage. And storage has actually uh, decreased uh, more than um, computing. Remember, computing went from this cost here roughly down to 0.05. So storage is actually um, 
got is getting cheaper slightly faster than computing, although there is actually a slight change in slope around here, and the slope has decreased, and so probably slopes are similar. But 38% annually is pretty impressive. I remember you know, thinking of buying large uh, storage systems around there. Uh, that would in some sense be a, been a mistake. Investing in storage is not an easy thing to do, given this drastic uh, change in cost. Anything you buy is sort of out of date. And now we come to, to bandwidth. This is only decreasing 27% every year, the cost of bandwidth. Uh, this actually looks a bigger effect, because this number, this difference here is less than a factor of 100. However, the time period is different. The previous time periods went from early 1990s up to, up to 2012. Uh, but the best number to use is the 27% versus the 38% for storage. So bandwidth is uh, drastically uh, Im improving, and in fact, the bandwidth is possibly the most important part of the internet because it's the although know, the the, the uh, it's the bandwidth has enabled the internet. You can say the computing and s the storage uh, decline has enabled clouds to actually act as the repository of the internet, and the computing has enabled smartphones and. Uh, thin clients to enable broad, universal access to everything. So this again comes from the uh, in, uh, KPCB uh, Internet Trends uh, presentation. Trend that is on the internet and social media. How much the global penetration is, and it's really quite striking how big it is. Nowadays, we have 49% uh, internet penetration and 33% Social media penetration, and that has um, sort of doubled or slightly over doubled from um, 2009 through 2017. This particular slide comes from the 2018 Internet Trends, so it's an up-to-date slide. Um, Here we get some consumer information: television versus. Um, uh, smartphone time, or you know, I mean, let's say I assume mobile is dominantly smartphone. Television is uh, going to lie below smartphones coming around now, because that's 2019 is here. This one here is 2018. And of course, in 2009, which wasn't so long ago, television was well over 10 times mobile. So that's a very fast shift, and there are other graphs we have which shows that the current changes we're seeing are much faster than previous changes. They don't require a lot of effort to implement, because uh, electrons and photons, which is the dominant implementation technology, is um, not terribly difficult to, to implement. Here we have a, a plot of the number of our users um, using particular platforms. And we see uh, Facebook as number one. I hadn't realized this, and I saw this, that actually YouTube is increasing. Uh, I knew about Instagram increasing, but YouTube is actually above Instagram and increasing at a comparable rate over the last two years. WhatsApp, WeChat, which is the dominant China one, is um, this is a global uh, plot. Facebook Messenger, Snapchat, Pinterest, I um, mean, and um, Twitch, these are all Twitter. Um, it, it's quite striking how how little some of them are changing, and how large some others. I mean, in general, it's going up, but it's really quite selective on the platform. Pretty interesting. Here is another sort of blamange, or whatever you want to call it, of, um, of of social media statistics. Uh, here's Facebook, active data users by geography. Look at it, and just marching up there. Um, it's increasing seemingly quite fast. 500 in Q2 19, and a mere 280 in uh, Q1 50. So pretty fast. And of course, there's increase in all um, areas. Is US and Canada, that's pretty flat. Europe is going up 
Asia Pacific, of course, is where most of the increase is, and um, also the rest of the world. Uh, we've got a look at YouTube, which we saw was going up. It's actually, uh, maybe this is keeping Google alive and allowing it to waste a billion dollars a year on AI research. Is uh, it's uh, it's ad revenue, which of course the AI researchers in YouTube, they build the recommender engines that um, actually um, allow YouTube to keep their customers happy. So the investment in AI by Google is not trivially wasted. It does go into Google products. And here we have another plot of the similar type, monthly active users. Um, as a function here of 2019, as a function of a platform showing um, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Snapchat, Twitter. It is astonishing to me, given how many the notorious nature of Twitter that it gets so few users. I must admit, I don't use it. I don't. I find it actually. I don't use Facebook or Twitter. I find them very difficult to find any substance there. The comments are all hundreds of people saying. Plus one or equivalent or yes or smiley face to announcements about people eating pizza and things. I find it not so interesting, but maybe I'm something I'm screwed up. Anyway, that's the. This just points out the continual thriving nature of social media. This is a sort of interesting chart. All right, we're doing constant dollars, and we take. Um, the first 20 years of a technology. So the first technology is radio, which must be 1926. The next technology is TV, which is uh, presumably sometimes after the war, Second World War. And the third technology is internet. They don't actually tell you when they put the start. Um, but <coughs> internet is actually now about 20 years old. So that probably started in the, in the checking in 1995. Um, so anyway, you can just look at the, how fast advertising expenditure has risen. And you will see that uh, internet has risen much faster in 20 years than the radio did and the television did. We're showing that internet-based uh, media has grown much faster than the previous media uh, revolutions. Because so that's that's sort of an interesting comment, both on the. Um, well, it's an interesting comment on how the internet media revolution is sort of different from previous revolutions. It's a much more intense revolution. This has been driven by such total changes in the way we do things. Okay, here is a graph to prove that not everything goes up. The number of smartphone shipments is actually declining at the moment. That's actually. Been well publicized with articles about the future of Apple. Because Apple is moving, the Apple Watch is soaring. Apple has had a good history of, of, of actually being sensitive to the way technology is moving. Um, and um, this smartphone shipment reflects various trade issues and just the fact that the market in the many areas is totally saturated. Uh, this particular plot also points out that uh, when I started this course around here, uh, that was not e not so obvious uh, who would dominate. Uh, Android and iOS, uh, the Apple operating system was dominant, but there was healthy contributions. Look, in 2009, it was actually the uh, the other was dominant, uh, but uh, nowadays there is uh, essentially nothing. You go over here, it's uh, all Apple and iOS. And uh, the other disappeared in 2017. But anyway, the main point is it's going down. It went up pretty solidly in this uh, plot, from, which is the prettier plot from 2000. Mary Mika doesn't seem to write such quite such pretty plots as she used to. Uh, it um, was slowing down 3% year over year. Now it's minus 4% uh, in the latest uh, release for the 2018 shipments. So. This is this will impact some things, but it also reflects a great success. Things can't always go up because there's a finite number of um, customers in the world, and so this is well into the plateau of productivity. And, and then, of course, the companies are just 
um, looking at upgrades for a lot of their sales. They're still, they're, they're still selling, it's just they're not selling as many each year as they used to, because the number of new customers has um, is, is, is lowering, and possibly more important, these phones are so good, it's not so clear until the battery runs out or you crack the screen, uh, why you would actually update, upgrade a modern, a modern uh, smartphone. They're really very good, and the improvements from year to year are not so great. So let's uh, move on, thank you. Yeah. All right, here is actually the amount of time people use or waste on the on the internet every day. And um, that is growing. Uh, this is um, oh, hours per day, and it turns out that the typical adult user spends 5.6 hours per day on the internet. Of which over three are on mobile, two are at the desktop, and 0.4 are on something else. Um, it's like kiosks or something like that. So this is it's actually quite striking that so much as mobile, because you would think anybody who was in the business would not be on mobile. They'll be in the 2.2 um, desktop slash laptop. All right, here we have um, online advertising. And that's that uh, is increasing quite a lot. Uh, 50 billion up to 73 billion in 2016, with mobile actually sitting there at almost the same as desktop. Actually, mobile even looks a bit bigger. Whereas in 2015, the, I mean, clearly 2015, uh, mobile is significantly smaller than desktop. So there's been a dramatic switch. The desktop has gone down a little, and the mobile has gone up enormously. And of course, over here, desktop was just all there was. And well, it has gone from 23 billion on the desktop to maybe 35, 36 billion now. So it's gone up from 2009 to 2016. But not nearly as much as the uh, mobile, which has gone from zero essentially in 2009. Even though, of course, cell phones existed, but they weren't smartphones in those days. And um, now it's a huge amount of um, smartphone advertising. All right, here's an interesting plot of advertising versus um, time spent by potential people who will participate in the advertising. And there are two striking plots. One is this one, print, which shows that um, somehow advertising is four times more prevalent in print than it would seem need to be, given that 4% of the time is spent reading print, 16% of the advertising spending is in print. And that contrasts with mobile, which is 25% of the user interaction, but only 12% of the advertising budget. So, that says that has to be readjusted. If you look at the other um, areas, TV is a little over, um, over um, emphasized. It's sort of curious that print and TV, would have, you would expect them to, because um, both the legacy um, Media that they would actually have the same the same mismatch between advertising and use, but somehow TV hasn't had it hasn't got this gross of uh, expenditure on advertising. In the, even look, notice here the actual internet, the non-mobile internet, is um, actually got too much advertising. Although of course most of that should just switch to the um, mobile, which is a which is also sort of the internet, so well, very closely related. And this is just reflecting the um, shift, a very rapid shift from desktops to mobile. Okay, folks, here we have an ex uh, actually an extension of the previous slide with the more modern data. 
showing a significant change, actually. Here we have uh, 2016, um, and here in, in 2016, the um, mobile was still, um, had a deficit. Uh, print had a huge positive, and uh, radio, TV, and internet were about uh, well balanced between time spent and ads, ad money spent. If we go to uh, 2018, uh, we see, for at least if we look at the desktops and mobile, which are a rephrasing of internet and mobile, we see actual good match. The advertisers are putting the dollars where people spend their time. Notice the um, in this one here, the TV is significantly above mobile. Now mobile is essentially the same as TV, and in fact, we predicted in 2019 mobile would exceed TV. Here's TV. Um, if we and they also now even go back in time to 2010, where there was a drastic uh, underweighting of internet and mobile, and print is actually always oversubscribed. In this um, sort of in 2018, surprising radio is undersubscribed. Maybe uh, venture capitalists don't listen to the radio in their cars or something, so they don't realize how important it is. Um, it's not. The dominance of video, which people like to focus on, I must admit, I, I'm not a fan so much a fan of video as other people because most of the time I actually uh, interact with media. I don't, I'm not allowed to do video either at work, or when it's sort of distracting to other people, or I'm in a car. Uh, work I can use images, in cars I can even, I can't even use images. I have to use audible, and so I, for me, radio or the equivalent of recorded books and things like that, or music, are much are very important. All right, so this is a discussion of uh, up-to-date discussion here on advertising spending, which at least for the largest uh, um, largest venues is um, well balanced. And if I was an owner of a newspaper, I'd be rather worried. A print paint newspaper, I'd be worried. And of course. Um, a lot of people like, a lot of newspapers are moving online. Here we look in more detail at the advertising share by media. Um, we have um, the internet advertising going up. <coughs> Radio is actually going up. Newspaper and magazines are declining. Um, music is going up. Video games going up. Cinema going up. And uh, if we now plot it against um, time, we can see that uh, um, everything is pretty flat from 2014 to uh, 2018, um, except for internet, which is sorry. Um, okay, so that's um, an interesting observation. Here we have another set of statistics measuring how the users are interacting with the internet. We have the global internet users up to 2016. And here we have an update, which is not quite the same format to 2018. This is the trouble I have with, with this field. You can't get the same plot later on as you did early, because they changed the way they present it. Um, and if you look um, here, you'll see um, U.S. Is, doesn't have many non-internet users, nor does Japan. Japan is saturated, even Russia. Uh, Russia, Germany, of course, is saturated. Um, United Kingdom is totally saturated. Uh, China is uh, over 50% over uh, utilized, uh, I mean, internet uh, uh, enabled. And so we're really actually, when we're making good um, progress in presenting the internet to the world. And uh, here is the growth of the internet users at flat at about 10% in um, uh, um, year to year growth in 2016. Here is actually the internet penetration, the third plot here, at 51%. I say more than half of humanity is online. That's, that's nice.
And here in the last in this set, we have year-to-year -year growth of in Chinese uh, mobile users. And it's sort of um, flat between 8 and 9 percent at the moment. So it's still going up. But remember, the Internet access in China is over 50 percent already. So it's not going to keep soaring as much as it did back here, for instance, when there was a huge growth in uh, Chinese uh, Internet, um, u mobile Internet users. So we're, we're looking towards in the next uh, you know, three to five years, Essential total saturation. Then the progress will be from innovation, not from just grabbing more users. So let's uh, let's uh, see how that uh, plays out. Here's an interesting uh, plot of the, uh, which is sort of um, if you'd been predicting this ten years ago, you might have got this wrong. Here is actual real physical things, trucks going on roads and delivering things to you. Um, and uh, here is the volume of parcels and packages. Here is the year-to-year -year growth, which is actually increasing. It's now at over, it's almost 9%. Yeah, 9%. And we're up to 10 billion parcels per year. And of course, that's due to the fact that they were buying electronically on, say, Amazon or Walmart or, or Alibaba, were being delivered physically by uh, FedEx, UPS, uh, UPS, and DHL. And so that's producing this counterintuitive growth of an old technology, a truck or a van or whatever they want to use. Because they use aircraft as well. Okay, folks, here is. Uh, Plot, really interesting plot about how people are actually monetizing or making progress in this rapidly changing world. Uh, we have here Europe, which is declined. Now the US also declined, and in fact declined more than Europe from 1960. Uh, but recently, the US is actually starting an uptick compared to, well, uh, well it's, it's not actually uptaking as much as these plots down here. But because uh, China is the one that's really gaining, of course, that's a rapidly growing economy. But they, they, whereas Europe somehow is taking a loss from the growth of China and uh, and India, because India, which is not is growing, but is at a significantly lower level than China, is Latin America constant. So we see um, Europe declining, Latin American constant. China dramatically increasing, and USA hanging in there and actually also increasing on a global uh, scale. So that's this is the uh, gross domestic product measured in units of current current dollars. So I think that's um, a good good number, which uh, says that somehow the U.S. economy has adjusted well to these technologies and gained significantly from them. Notice this interesting glitch around 2000. It soared and then the US dropped more than Europe did. Europe just struggled on here, but then it just declined. Pretty interesting differences between different places. And um, okay, here is um, uh, Mary Meeker's uh, discussion of um, market capitalization, which is really just uh, see where the leadership is, and it compares. Uh, Market cap between um, uh, 2019, 7th of June, and 7th of June 2016, three years. And it's actually quite striking that um, the US companies, Microsoft and Amazon, have done better than the Chinese, 106%, 93. Google, which is Alphabet, Facebook, Apple. And here's Baidu, probably a very well-known Chinese company, essentially the search company dominant in China. Quite why it's done so badly, I don't know. As far as I know, it still is the dominant Chinese search company and has pretty reasonable um, things. Here's one which has a little bit of controversy with the leadership, JD.com. Xiaomi had just come in 
we can see various Shopify is a famous company. It effectively offers online shopping support for uh, the long tail of, sh of online shopping merchants, uh, small people, um, small business um, online shopping. Netflix, of course, has gone up a lot. Even Adobe, PayPal, Salesforce. Things like Booking.com are struggling because uh, there's not, I mean, somehow there's probably not such a huge um, expansion in the online um, hotel business. But still, this gives you a pretty interesting, I mean, the overall top 30 has gone up a factor of two, 100%. But it's uh, pretty varied about how it's spread out. Okay, here we go, third uh, lesson 4C on industry trends. It has three trends, voice, cars, and deep learning. It's relatively clear these are three important areas that modern, uh, the modern world is evolving. And this just has some details of those trends. All right, let's, uh, let's move on.